Good morning. This is Chris Rivera, President and CEO of the Washington Biotechnology and Biomedical Association at day two of Life Science Innovation Northwest, our 15th annual Life Science Conference. I'm here this morning with Colonel David McCune, who is the Chief of Clinical Studies Service and Director of Clinical Trials at Madigan Army Hospital. First of all, Colonel McCune, welcome and thank you for coming this morning. Thanks, Chris. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your role at Madigan and why you're at LSINW this year. So first of all, thank you to WBBA for, for uh, having us in and helping promote the vision of what we're doing down at Madigan. My role at Madigan is to enhance and improve our research program. What we feel we have down there is a, the, the component parts of a really robust research program. We've got a very large patient base. We've got a research program that already exists. And we feel like we could really do is be a partner for a lot of the members of WBBA that, that come here. We, what we find is that for a lot of companies, there's a gap between what they can do that's a clinical trial that we could do to help them move forward. So I'm here to promote that, okay. to, to increase the knowledge of our research program and to try and find partners that can help themselves but also help the military beneficiaries that we take care of. What type of patient population do you serve at Madigan and beyond? Thanks for that question because um, a lot of people confuse us somewhat with the VA. Mm -hmm. So the, the Madigan population is the Army active duty, so that's the soldiers, but it's also their spouses and their dependents. So that gives a male, female, and pediatric population. And then people who have served an entire military career can retire in the area with benefits for both themselves and their spouse. So we have a geriatric male and female population as well. So a little bit distinct from the VA population, which tends to skew more male, like the service member population. And is it primarily just here in Washington State, or do you reach out to other parts of the region? We, we, Madigan's part of the larger Army network of, of military treatment facilities. And so Madigan is the referral center for a large part of the western region of the United States. So we have a, about 100 to 120,000 people who get their primary care there, okay. and another population like that that could potentially be referred for, for specialty care. Right. And then we're linked to the, the other military medical centers that are scattered across the country and in Europe. Fantastic. And tell me a little bit more about the, so you, you have patients who've been in the service for many, many years, maybe even decades, including mm -hmm. family members. Do you have their records? I mean, how do you, can you go back and, and track maybe disease process? That's one of the things we think is, is a real strength of our program is we've been under a single electronic health record for over a decade. Okay. Um, all of the data longitudinally for a number of patients that, like you said, have been in care for a long time. I've got one, uh, breast cancer patient that I've been following for 15 years uh -huh. um, and, and I went back through her records and it's all there. It's a challenge because our, mel our electronic record wasn't designed for research mm -hmm. and wasn't designed to extract outcomes easily, but there's a lot there. Okay. And so you take that large population, put them all under a single electronic record so even when they migrate to say another military site, we can still track them and follow that. So we think that's a real strength. So even either retrospective data or even interventional potential prospective interventional studies, you, have, you might have some good data there. We think so. One of the things about um, intervening and looking at things like pharmacoeconomics is we also have the outpatient, inpatient, mm -hmm. pharmacy, kind of all of it under one roof and one electronic record. So all of those things are searchable for outcomes, as you said, both retrospectively and prospectively. Okay. And what type of diseases typically do you see in your medical records or patient, type of the patients mm -hmm. you see? One of the things that I, when I'm talking to potential partners is to, to make a distinction about what we can do well and, and what we think our strengths are. Um, we're not going to necessarily be a strength for really esoteric diseases that, that would require a large referral population. What we think our strength is are the diseases that primary care doctors treat. So both pediatric, internal medicine, and family medicine, hypertension, diabetes, um, you know, cholesterol issues, all of these things that are challenging to research because you need a really large population in which to conduct your research. We think those are some of our strengths that we can bring. And then you add to that that we have our lab that we can do biospecimen, um, analyses and that we can start working toward personalized medicine by combining that aspect of research with this large population. We think that's our strength. Great. Now we both just came out of a panel looking at diseases of developing countries and mm -hmm. you asked a question about the military's role mm -hmm. in potentially either delivering or de either delivering v vaccine or therapeutics or being at the point mm -hmm. of the spear of many of these diseases. Can you t expand upon that a little bit? Yes, because I think that the answers we're revealing in that there is a, a clear role for the Army as the funding organization, but I think that a lot of times there's a gap between the funding and the implementation and the conduct of the research. And the point I was trying to raise is that we're sending soldiers and Navy and Air Force are there as well. They're going to the sites where these diseases are happening. Um, I had the opportunity to talk to one of the docs that led the Ebola response. He was an in-country doc assigned to, to SOCOM that they said, hey, you're, you're the leading medical officer here. You're going to lead this effort of getting people in and handling the logistics of working with the host company, country. And so what we say is we've already got so much of that that we do. 
why not pair that up with research and, and yep. develop it more rapidly? Things we can also do would be field testing, you know, um, finding out if something really is ruggedized enough to survive in an austere environment. We're, again, we're going to these environments. We train in these environments mm -hmm. in mock fashion in the United States. And so just having a partner that can help a, a company that's trying to develop a solution like that for global health have another partner. We think that's kind of the thing that's being overlooked is yeah. not just look to us as a funding partner, but an implementation partner as well. How have your interactions been here at the conference this week? I think that they're very good. And, and one of the things that we continue to still run into is the, oh, I had no idea response, right. is, is that people just are not in the habit of thinking about us as a research partner. I think I told you that story one time. I was at a panel talking about research assets in the, in the region, and the map literally cut off right above us. We were literally not on the map. Yeah. And so that's, that was kind of my wake-up call that what I thought was a really good program just wasn't recognized. Right. And so we've been working and, and we've been using LSI and W as a great forum to get right. the message out. And when people hear about us, the light bulb goes off and they, they start to think, hey, I really could use a local partner. What we find is having someone that you can meet with face-to-face, -face, design a trial. What we're trying to do is find the way to get resources to do what we do just faster and better because we find that for particularly small companies that are looking for their first research study to prove that their technology works, that's really the gap that I think exists here and that we hope we can fill. Great. Have you had any uh, conversations or examples so far about uh, of doing these kinds of so programs? What we're finding is the, the quickest um, pathway to getting something going is probably in the IT space. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the Army Surgeon General has been a real leader on is what, what she's called the life space, or, or the 565,000, 500 minutes you're not in the doctor's office. And so the Army has been pr pursuing what we call the performance triad, which is better sleep, better nutrition, better exercise, trying to get into our patients' lives because we are a population health organization. And so we've been, and we've been that, you know, we're universal care, universal access, and it's, it really matters to our, to our institution what the overall health of our soldiers are, not just for healthcare, but also for doing their mission, which right. is to, to go out and be soldiers. So we've been leaning forward in that for a while already, and what we find is there's a natural um, partnership that arises from companies that want to start um, kind of in the app space. So uh, mm -hmm. one example would be LightSprite. We're doing a trial with them right. looking at uh, a phone-based app for stress reduction and stress management. We're working with Tomorrow on a smoking cessation app. Um, we're, we're another company that we're working with and we're trying to, so, so the example I would say is that's outside the firewall. Mm -hmm. You know, things where it's patient generated data with either a wearable or something they're doing on their phone and it stays outside of the electronic record and the doctor or other provider interacts with them using that data. The alternative approach is to try and get on the inside and okay. uh, Health123 is working that pathway. Right. The challenge with that is there's just a lot of validation. It's a, it's a longer process and right. it takes a company that's willing to take a longer path to get in. But what we, what we are excited about that possibility is having something that the provider can then use that's actually internal to the healthcare okay. record. That you're generating things in a, in a medical encounter that you don't have to port over from something else that it's, that it's, that it's internal. So th those are kind of the two ways of going about it. And those are some of our early successes that have again Fantastic. come out of this conference from that's last year. Great to hear. Any final comments or words for our view viewing audience? Um, again, if I, if I could just communicate anything, it's an awareness that what we have down at Madigan we think is an excellent partner for biotech in the region, that, right. that we have a lot to offer and we're really just scratching the surface of what we can do. Well, we're thrilled you're in the region. We really look to you as a great partner. Thank you for being at the conference Thank you. today. Enjoy. Again, this is Chris Chavera at Life Science Innovation Northwest 2015 at the Washington State Convention Center. We'll see you soon.